All right, all right, all right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Glad Roundtable for the launch of our SSO beta and branded sign-in. I'm Andy Claremont, the head of community here at Glide, and I would love to know where you're coming in from. So in the comments, in the chat, please let us know where you're tuning in from today. We're so uh, glad to have you here. Now, we've got a few things to cover over the next 30 minutes or so. We're going to start by introducing our new SSO beta and branded sign-in. Then we'll jump into a live demo showing you how to set this all up and we'll wrap up with Q&A. Now we're going to be keeping an eye on the chat throughout the entire session. So if you have any questions, please just drop them in there and we'll get to them at the end. Now, from the beginning, we've made it very easy for users to sign into their Glide apps. They don't need to remember another set of credentials. All they need to do is enter their email. Then they can verify their identity by clicking the link in that email or using the pin that's sent to their address. Now, the sign-in process is even easier if you use sign-in with Google. Now, we, we love Google. Glide started as a way to build apps on top of Google Sheets, and we're still Google partners today. We're, we're also well aware that not everybody uses Google. So what does that mean? Well, from talking to our business customers, what we've seen and heard is that they need more sign-in options. They need more than what we have today. They need support for their current SSO providers like Okta, Azure Active Directory, Salesforce, and dozens of others. And these providers let companies centralize identity verification and grant access to the tools that their employees need for work. So. If you're not familiar with SSO, here's a very, very simplified explanation. SSO stands for single sign-on. It's basically one set of credentials that lets a user log into every single application that's connected to their SSO identity provider. It also gives IT teams streamlined access and centralized control over all of uh, what users can get into. So now, instead of managing access in the users table for each one of your Glide apps, you can now grant access through SSO. You can think of it like having an employee badge that grants secure access in, in an office building. You have that one badge, and with that badge, you can get into everything that you need to get into based on your permissions. Now, SSO is great because it makes logging in easier for your users. And it lets you control access to your Glide apps alongside all the other tools that they use every day. But what's also important is that you make sure that your users feel like they're actually logging into an official company app. Your Glide apps should look and feel connected to your business. Now, that's why we're also rolling out these new branded sign-in options. They give you more freedom to customize what your users see. And that way, when they go to sign in, they know that they're in the right place. So with that, I would love to uh, invite Larry on to show us how this all works. Now, Larry's on the engineering team here at Glide, and he's been leading all of this amazing work on SSO. Thanks for jumping in, Larry. Yeah, thanks, Andy. Um, really looking forward to showing people what we've been working on. Um, and yeah, seeing how people use it. Awesome. I'd, I'd have to say like the real meat of what folks are coming in here for is seeing the magic that we've put into the app, uh, into the uh, ability to add SSO to apps. So uh, I'm gonna just hand it over to you and take it away. Great. Um, yeah, so like what you mentioned earlier uh, with sign in with Google, a lot of the work to implement SSO is done, was done way back when we added sign in with Google. Um, so with, with that, um, we're able to answer the question, like, who are you? Um, so if I click sign in with Google, I go over to Google, sign in there, and then come back to Glide, and Glide knows that I am who I say I am. But that doesn't really tell me anything about should I like have access to the app. Um, and so we have 
you know, Glide has some tools here to let us control, you know, who has access and, you know, namely the users table. Um, but the cool thing is with SSO, uh, it can answer both who are you and do you have access? And so not only does it, does it make it easier for IT to, to control who has access kind of at a central level, it also simplifies access management in the Glide apps themselves. Um, and so um, for starters though, let's go back to the good old sign-in page. Um, one of the, the features we just shipped is an ability to, um, to brand this, to customize it. And so one of the things we can do is drag in a background image. Um, we can add a logo that'll replace the default app logo too. And that'll just give us sort of a consistent theme across all of our apps. Um, so let's pick, let's pick our logo here and, you know, I'm not really loving the, the company name there twice. So let's try the simplified logo, um, and we'll publish this and, um, see it, see it live in a browser here. Um, so yeah, that, that just gives us some flexibility here to, to make things more consistent and make things more custom. Um, and then with SSO, uh, if we go over here to integrations and scroll all the way down, um, we got a single sign-on integration here and we can add that to the app. And that's basically uh, the, the bulk of the customization here that we need to do. All of, all of the real meat of, the, of it is done in the SSO provider itself. And so if, if you, the person who's adding this integration has access to um, add applications to your provider, you can hit connect. Otherwise you can copy this link and send it to, you know, your IT admin or whoever does have access and they can go through this flow. Um, for us, we'll hit connect. Um, and you can see, so we partnered with WorkOS to handle um, onboarding providers here. And what they provide is a long list of various providers, uh, Okta, Google, um, Azure, Salesforce. And if your provider isn't listed here, you can configure it manually with uh, SAML or OIDC. Um, we use Okta internally, and that's also, you know, we have several customers who've come to us and, and use Okta. So for this demo, we'll just pick that one. Um, and each of those providers, uh, there's gonna be some detailed instructions on how to configure this in your provider, exactly what to click on, what to do. And then also some values that are specific to this integration that you're going to basically just copy and paste over. Um, so for, for the sake of this demo, so that you don't have to watch me fill out a form for a couple minutes, um, I've already pre-filled it out, but some of these, um, some of these values are specific. Um, so, um, here we just, uh, configure what attributes are getting sent from the provider to glide. Um, and then some finishing steps, you know, assigning myself to this, uh, to this application. Um, and then, then we need something, uh, a URL from the actual integration to give to glide so it can, so they can communicate. So I'll copy that from here. This it, Okta calls it a metadata URL. Um, and then after that's all done, we can do a test sign in just to make sure that everything is connected. Um, and since I'm already signed into Okta, you probably won't see a sign in form or anything. Um, but this little banner at the top tells us everything's good to go. Um, all the stuff that's uh, all the other stuff here on this page is just debugging information in case something didn't go according to plan. Uh, it'll tell you why and you can use this to sort of troubleshoot what needs to be configured differently. Um, so from there, we can close this and close this tab and come back to the Glide app. Um, check this integration again, and it just verifies that that the setup we just did is um, it's able to communicate with. So um, that's all we can do. Let's um, uh, change this to the button title to sign in with Okta and go ahead and publish. Um, so what what you'll if you notice the the previous sign-in method we were using was pin email and we had the the email form um now that we have sso we'll have an option to sign in using our sso provider 
And so right now we'll have both options, kind of like if you enabled sign in with Google with pin emails. Um, and so this is a good kind of middle ground. If you have an existing app and you're just adding SSO and you're transitioning to it, maybe not everyone has access to the provider yet. You can keep both authentication methods going. Um, and if you go over to privacy here, we can see that, that for this application, uh, people who are in the users table or people who come through using SSO will be able to sign into the app. And the way this works kind of behind the scenes is when you sign in with SSO, um, you'll be added to the user's table. And so if you have anything like permissions or other attributes you need to assign to users, you can use the same flow workflow you use now. So once they sign in the first time, they'll be in the user's table and you can modify that row as you see fit. Um, so if we refresh this sign in page, now we have a nice sign in with Okta button. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and sign out of Okta here so you can see what the flow looks like for the most part. Um, so I click here. I go over to Okta. This is normal. If you're not familiar with Okta, this is just normal flow on their side. Um, I'm going to sign in there, verify my second factor credentials. Um, and then it kicks me back over to Glide where, where I'm signed in. Uh, and that's it. So let me sign out here because we're going to make a couple more changes to the, to the sign-in page. Um, yeah, so after you have that going, you're comfortable with SSO. Most customers that we've talked to just want SSO to be the only authentication method. So from there, we can turn off pin email and use only SSO and we'll publish that change. And now if we go over to privacy, we can see that the only people that are allowed to sign into the app are the people that are coming here through SSO. Um, so even if you exist in the user's table, um, you need to have you know, you need to be authorized on the identity provider side to get into the app. Um, and uh, while we're waiting for this to publish, kind of one of the, the sort of the ways that SSO is implemented here is uh, we require we require users to re-authenticate every 24 hours. So if you need to change, remove access to a particular Glide app, um, you can do that in the identity provider and then in about 24 hours, um, you know, they'll be required to sign in again. And, you know, if they don't have access, they won't, won't be allowed in. Um, so yeah, now, now with pin email off and only SSO, there's, you have a single button to click to sign into any of your Glide apps. Um, and it'll be a familiar flow that, you know, people in your business who are used to your identity provider will, will understand and will all be, will be streamlined there. Um, so yeah, that, that's Brandon sign in pages and SSO. We're really looking forward to seeing how people use this and hearing what we should be working on next. Awesome. Thanks, Larry. Uh, I got a few questions here. Um, first one, uh, kind of ties into what you mentioned about that 24 hour period. If someone needs to re uh, revoke a user's access sooner than that, what's the best way to revoke that access to the app? Yeah, that's a good question. If you um, if there's a case where you need to revoke access quickly, you can you know obviously go over to the identity provider, do it there. And if you can't wait the 24 hour period, if you go to the users table and remove them from the users table in a couple minutes, the Glide app is gonna notice that and you know sign them out. And you know if they're not authorized in the SSO provider, they won't be able to get back in. And you mentioned the users table, so. Uh... This new SSO capability allows authentication into the app, but what do, does it do anything for permissions in the app itself? Uh, what's the relationship between SSO and the user's table if you have that enabled? Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's it's only going to control who can actually sign into the app. If you have special roles or different things that your particular app uses, um, you would just make those changes that pretty much just how you do it today uh, with pin email. So once they sign in, they're in there, you can make any changes, setting roles, setting different flags in the user's table, um, and they'll be persisted. Um, if in the future, you know, uh, access is revoked for a particular user, um, that row will stay in the user's table. So there's, we're not deleting anything from the user's table, um, but because, you know, if SSO is the only method for signing in, then um, even though they're in the user's table, they're, they're not going to be able to sign in. Gotcha. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, I have another question here from Jesus 
and pull this up on screen. Uh, the difference uh, between the normal Google SSO and this new SSO implementation, what's the difference there? Yeah, yeah, the, the terminology can be uh, confusing, especially because Google could be, is an SSO provider, um, but like the, the typical, what is in Glide today, is, you know, the sign in with Google, um, that is pretty much just a different way of me providing my email address to Glide. So, you know, instead of me typing in my email and getting a pin and confirming that, yes, I am this email address, I go to Google and Google tells Glide that, yes, this person is this email address. Um, and so SSO also does that, right? It I go to my SSO provider and sign in. So Glide knows that I'm that email, but it also um, takes it one step further and lets me control uh, who has access. So like the two questions, who are you and should you be here? Like those are the <laughs> things that are answered with the SSO provider. So I guess what doesn't really change is that once you've authenticated through SSO, the same way that you would like authenticate through uh, sign in with Google, we're getting that identity, the email address, we're bringing that into the user's table. And then what you would usually do with granting permissions, with roles, visibility conditions, all everything that you're familiar with in building Glide apps using the user's table, that hasn't changed. It's another way to get those users into that table, basically. Yeah, exactly. Got it. Got it. Awesome. Now, let's see if there's any other questions in here. All right. I think we're good. If you're watching this either live or you're watching the replay, if there's a question that you have, you can also bring it to the Glide community. We'll be happy to answer there. So here's the breakdown with these two new capabilities. So SSO introduces new authentication options that easily grants your team access to the Glide apps they need for work. So if you have a team that's already using Okta or Google or any of these other SSO identity providers to access different apps at work, Glide apps can now coexist in that same universe where they're authenticating in with the same method that they're used to using for all of their other workplace apps. Now, right now we're entering into beta. So SSO is available in beta on enterprise plans and business plans. Now, if you're not on a business plan, you can sign up for a free trial and test out the SSO beta. Uh, but once we leave the beta phase, SSO will only be available for enterprise plans. Now for branded sign-in, this lovely ability to customize your sign-in screen, make it look and feel more on-brand, a little bit more uh, professional, that's available now on pro plans and higher. So if you're on a pro plan or anything greater than that, you can go and start using uh, custom sign-in screens right now. So... As I mentioned, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions while we're in the beta phase for SSO or anything about custom sign-in or anything else at all, please bring it to the community. Go to community.gladapps.com and leave your suggestions there. We're always watching and pulling that back to the team. And with that, we are set. All right, Larry, thank you so much for joining this nice and efficient roundtable. Thank you, everybody else, for jumping on with us. Uh, it's always nice when we're efficient. Everybody, thank you so much. We'll see you at the next slide roundtable and next slide event. Until then, slide on. We'll talk to you later. Cheers. See ya.